In this video, I'm going to be talking with you and modeling some of the place value concepts that your fourth grader needs to become comfortable with and able to use and apply when doing their math homework, math practice, and class, a variety of math concepts throughout the year. They need to be able to read numbers up to the millions place value, write numbers up to the millions place value, and then also explain the value and relationship of digits and between digits. So I'm going to model each of these for you um, and talk you through some of the problems you might see them come home with or be talking to you about. So in order to read and write numbers and explain um, the relationships, they need to know the individual place values. So like I said, they need to go up to the millions place. Um, so we're going to kind of backtrack to where they started from. In kindergarten, they started with the ones and the tens, okay? Um, and these build on each other. When you have ten ones, it makes a ten. And then they add it on when they have ten tens. That makes groups of a hundred. So they've been doing this since second grade. In third grade, they added on the thousands place which is when you have groups of hundreds or tens or ones. Um, and now we are adding on a few more place values. There's the ten thousands, the hundred thousands, and the millions. So these are the place values where we're going to mostly be working with numbers this year. And in order to read and write numbers, um, place values are grouped together. And that can help students read and write numbers. So when place values are grouped together, those are called the periods. Um, and so I'll show you exactly what that means. So for me to say this number, I say 1 million, and then I group these together and say 564,000, and then I group these together and say 832. These are called the periods, and they help us group numbers and say numbers and write numbers. So this is called the ones, or you sometimes might see it called as the units period. And that helps us say 832, not 830 and 2, or 8 and 3 and 2. It helps us group that together. This here is called the thousands period. And that helps us say 564,000. And then this is called the millions period. And that also includes the 10 millions and the 100 millions, but we don't go that far in fourth grade most of the time. So like I said, these periods help us chunk the numbers as we're reading and writing them. So we read that left to right, so we would say 1,564,832. Now you don't say this period when you're ending that, um, what I want you to look at down here is numbers like this can be tricky when you have a zero as a placeholder. Um, a lot of times in these bigger numbers, it can get a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to model that one for you. This is 4 million, so 4 million, 75,469. So that's how you would read a number when there's a zero as a placeholder. And we've talked about why zeros are important placeholders. Otherwise, everything is squished down, and then it um, has less value. So that's the reading of numbers, using those periods to help us chunk the numbers together. You'll also notice that when one period goes to another period, that's where that comma comes in. Um, and those commas are important because it signals to us that one period is beginning and another is ending, so that we know how to read and write that number. So like I said, we've now practiced some of the reading of numbers. Fourth graders also need to be able to write numbers that they are hearing in word problems or in their environment. So if someone said 654,971, they need to be able to use those periods and those chunks to then write the number 654,000. So hearing that period name gives them the clue that they now need to write a comma. And then it was the 971. So there's the reading and the writing of larger numbers in fourth grade. I do want to bring your attention to the word and. A lot of fourth graders might want to say something like 654,000 and 971. We want to kind of steer them away from saying that because the number and comes involved when you're using decimals. So that'll be later on in fourth grade when we get into decimal points after the whole numbers. That's when the and comes in.
but we're not working with that right now. So right now there should not be an and involved when we're reading any of these whole numbers. All right, so moving on, we've talked about the reading and the writing of numbers. Now we're going to talk about explaining the value of digits. So they need to know that these place values have different values when we look at the digits. They need to be able to know that this number, 74,958, is actually 70,000 plus 4,000 plus 900 plus 50 plus 8. This is called expanded form. So if you ever see that term on any of their questions, homework, assessments, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for them to pull apart the number into what they know is the value behind each digit. So that's kind of explaining the value behind the digits. Now, getting into the relationship of digits here, I want to talk to you about a couple of these examples. So here you see the number 555, and fourth graders should know, because they've been doing this since um, first and second grade, and third grade that the, this is in expanded form 500 plus 50 plus 5 okay that's the value okay now we need to look at the relationship and one fourth grader said oh well you just add when you're going from one to the other you're just adding a zero yes that is true but there's a meaning behind that so it's not just adding a zero what it actually is is it's to get from this place value to this place value you're increasing by a multiple of 10. You're going five times 10 is 50. And then to go to the next higher place value, you're multiplying by 10 again. 50 times 10 is 500. So understanding the idea that as you increase your place value from one to the other, you are increasing by times 10. And that's because all of these are groups of 10. 10 ones gives you a 10. 10 tens gives you a hundred, 10 hundreds gives you a thousand, and so on. So that's the pattern that we see in the relationship between digits. Now in this number, all the digits are the same. Let's look at a number where the digits aren't the same, but we can still use that same idea. If we wanna look at the relationship or compare the digits four in the tens place and four in the hundreds place for these two numbers, well, we know that the value is 40, and we know that the value is 400. The relationship is that 400 is 10 times as much as 40 because it's one place value to the left. So if you, this one's in the tens place, this one's in the hundreds place, and since it's one place value to the left, it is 10 times as much. It might be a little bit easier to see that if I wrote it this way you can kind of see it a little bit better that these this is a place value to the left. This is the tens, this is the hundreds. Even though they're both a four, this is 40, this is 400. 400 is 10 times the amount as the 40. So that's that relationship, that place value increases by times 10 as you increase to the left. So keep these in mind when your fourth grader is reading multi-digit numbers, writing multi-digit numbers, having to explain the value behind those digits, and then also the relationship that they see as they're moving through the place value.